Hey, local leaders. Thanks for joining on to this iMovie editing coaching session. In this session, we're going to go through uh, really a bunch of different topics in regards to the different features of iMovie. Now, this session is for Mac users uh, utilizing a laptop or a desktop uh, that is an Apple product because iMovie is one of the free features of that platform. So, I'm going to show you a run through of my um, example video. Now, in this example video, you're going to see a uh, sort of different features that are available to you when utilizing the iMovie platform. So, I'm just going to make sure I've got my sound all ticked off so that way you guys can hear everything and we should be good to go. So, I'm going to play through this. This is an example of what I've done with an interview. Um, it wasn't necessarily the best interview. We'll go into ways and strategies to improve that. Uh, but I'll press play here and you'll be able to see the interview itself and what I've done to the editing. Hello, Studio City Community News in Hollywood, West Hollywood, LA. I'm here today with Billy, famous Billy from El Coyote. We're sitting here and chatting. And I, you know, I've known Billy. In fact, John, my husband, uh, called my father for his hand, my hand, from here. So we have 15 years of history. Thanks for taking a few minutes. So, um, how long have you been here at OK? 36 years. 36 years. Wow. And how old is El Coyote? 88. 88 years old. Wow. I, I know that I come to every year we come to the birthday parties and we have this famous pizza. The, the pizza, the, the, the soup, and the, and the meal. So you can walk, order an appetizer, a soup, and a meal at less than $20. It's amazing. And so tell me a little bit about the history of El Coyote. Well, it was opened up in 1931 by Mrs. March and her husband. Uh, they passed away apparently, but it's still it's still the same family as always. It's just been passed down from generation after generation after generation. So. I know it's a famous place. I sometimes come and see while we're here we get celebrity sightings. A lot of celebrity sightings. And then we're also famous for filming. We do a lot of filming. And not to not not to be proud of it, but it's really where Sharon Tate had her last meal. Sure. Oh, Sharon Tate. With Jane Sebring <laughs> and the Folgers. They dined here that night, went home and they got married. So, and you were telling me that you're actually going to be filming here. You're filming here, and he's going to do it on August 9th. Who's going to be filming here? Um, what's his name? Uh, Denzel? Was it Denzel? No. Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> Oh, so there you go. So next time you're looking for an amazing Mexican food restaurant, you have to come and try El Coyote. They have amazing margaritas, the food, they have Billy, they have history. So come on out. Thanks so much, Billy. I appreciate you taking the time. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Have a great day, everyone. Cool, so that's an example of what I would do for the editing for this interview. Now, the interview itself does not have enough questions. It's more of an example of uh, what we're gonna do with the edits, just to demonstrate that. Uh, but let's actually look at how I got there, because we started with a raw film. As you can see, I added in titles, there's an end screen, uh, added in images over the top of it, made a few transitions and splits in there. So let's actually look at how this came to be. So with all Ivy movie projects, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start from scratch, obviously. So you wanna create a new project here. Now once you click on create new you have the option to choose movie or trailer just stick with movie and what it will do is it'll pretty much see you up with a blank canvas. Now what I do is I set myself up with um, you know the any images and video that I'm wanting to work with over here on my screen and then I drag them over because to get them from your computer uh, desktop onto iMovie simply all you need to do is drag it over into this area here and it will be positioned down there. Alternatively, what you can do is you can remove this, um, delete that one. What you can do is drag this from here and put it into the bottom and it'll actually go into both spots. Now the reason why you wanna have it at the top is because you can drag it in again and again and again, you know, basically like your color palette uh, in terms of your overall art. Now the other images I wanna include in here are these two as well, so I'm gonna drag those two up here too. So I've got all my, my different colors, the different things that I'm wanting to add to the interview here. Now, I wanna have the video down here as well because this is what I'm gonna be working with. So I've got the beginning 
and I've got the end. If it's too zoomed out or zoomed in, you can adjust the zoom using this scroller here and you'll zoom in and out depending on where you've aligned. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to zoom in for precision edits. In addition to that, we've got our time of the interview. We've got a uh, video sort of preview of what's happening. And if I move my mouse across here, you can see it zooms through. Okay. Uh, and then I've also got this other little bar here. So you can see there's another one here that highlights in yellow when I move my mouse over it. This is basically your play bar. It's in line with where you are going to be starting. So if I move this here and press play, Her husband. Yeah. I will have started playing from that point. So always adjust this how you wish. Cool, so let's get started. Now, one of the things that I recommend you do with all video interviews uh, that you're editing is watch them through to begin with because you never know, A, the content that you missed during the interview that could be relevant for prospecting purposes, um, but B, you want to have a little bit of opportunity to make any finer edits to begin with. So if I press play here, I'll be able to get a good understanding of what I need to edit and first. Hello, studios. Cool. So already I can see that there's a couple of seconds of sort of dead time where it's not really contributing to the interview. Now I can trim this off if I want. There's actually multiple ways for me to do that. So what I like to do personally is I like to line up with the point that I think is where I need to make the edit. Probably about here, maybe a little bit later. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the film, right click this, and then I'm going to click split clip. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to separate the film from one big piece into two individual ones, right? And then that way, I can remove this two and a half seconds that I don't need by right-clicking it again and clicking delete. And then I can see what I've removed. Hello, Studio City. A little bit of a nicer introduction as opposed to what it was before because this is more of that straightaway getting started. Hello, Studio City. Cool. Now, if I've made a mistake, a really cool trick is to press Command and the letter Z. And what happens is that it brings back what you've just done. And you can press this a couple of times to just keep going backwards. It's kind of the undo button. Now, the other way that I could edit this is I could drag the ends. Now, you can actually do this on YouTube as well. But if you hover over to the end of your film, you see how I have those two arrows that pop up? I can drag that in to get rid of the beginning of the interview. So if I dragged it all the way there, it'll have removed a big chunk of my interview, about 30 seconds. Have you been here so that's kind of how that works there. Now, for my purposes, I just want to remove that sort of dead section there uh, where it's not really in engaging the interview. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to move my scroller to the left so I can see nice and easy. And I'm going to use my mouse to figure out where the best point to start is. This is probably the right point here. I can actually even see that on the waveform, the audio down here, that as soon as this picks up, that's where the interviewer starts to speak. So maybe just before that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this end of the film and drag this in line with that. Cool. Now let's actually see what I've done here. If I go back, let's see how that's worked. Hello, Studio City. Perfect, that's a great start compared to that sort of downtime there. Now, this is the way you need to film your interviews. You make them as edit-friendly as possible. So give yourself that couple of second barrier at the beginning. So with all interviews, once you press record, then just wait, count to three, one, two, three, then go into your interaction, okay? Don't just start straight away because it makes it a little bit more difficult to edit that. Um, and you don't want to have the interview starting at that point rather than your first couple of words. Excellent. Well, let's press play and let's see what other edits we want to make moving forward. This is Hollywood, West Hollywood, LA. I'm here today with Billy, famous Billy from El Coyote. Cool. So what the interviewer here has done is that they've introduced the interviewee. So this is a great opportunity to put a title screen in. Now, I recommend for your introductions, they should be a little bit bigger um, then what you'll see here, the introduction should be, hey, I'm sitting here with Darren Lee from parkbench.com. Darren is known for this, 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 and this. One of the really cool things about Darren's business is this. And I noticed in Darren's reviews that everyone talked about this and then get straight into the questions. What do you attribute to the ex success of those reviews? So that's how I would do the introduction and that's how I'd recommend you do those. Um, but really the same principle applies that you want to have a title that comes up. So let's find out exactly where we want our title to be. I'm here today with Billy, famous Billy. Cool. So around about here will be perfect. So to add a title, I'm going to navigate up here to the title section. 
and I'm going to drag and drop a title into the place here that I'm wanting to have that. Now, the really cool thing about iMovie is that it's got lots of awesome um, graphics for titles that are available here. Some also that aren't really too appropriate for your interviews. For instance, this one here, far, far away. I don't know if the Star Wars type theme is really going to suit the interview process. Um, some of these can look a little bit uh, gimmicky if we're really going too much here, but you can get a good understanding of what these do by moving your mouse across them like I'm doing right now. Now, one thing, one title that I think is particularly effective, we've got Overlap there. We've also got this one, Echo. Uh, another good one is Standard and Line. A common question that I get is, can I move these around? You know, I've got it in the bottom left corner. Can I reposition this? Now, the answer to that is no. So it's set in place, so make sure to pick one that you like. So I'm going to go with Echo. I'm going to drag this down by holding down my left mouse button. And what you'll see is that there's a purple box with a purple line on it that represent, represents where it's going to be positioned in the interview. So I'm going to line this up with my um, sort of play bar. I feel like that's the best tool to use to make sure you're getting everything on the right spot. And I'm going to let it go. Now what it's done is it's positioned that title there. So if I wind back and press play, oops, if I wind back and press play. I'm here today with Billy, famous Billy. So this is how the title is going to appear. From El Coyote, we're sitting here in and then it fades away. I quite like that. I'm going to use that title. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the terminology on there. So to adjust the, the wording that's on there, you simply navigate your mouse down to this little purple box and you double click with your left mouse button. Now under name, I'm going to put Billy's name. So I'm going to put famous Billy. Awesome. And I'm going to put the name of the restaurant. Cool. Now, let's see how this looks. I'm here today with Billy, famous Billy from El Coyote. We're sitting here and chatting. Perfect. Now, that is the right timing for that title. I can extend the title or shorten it by navigating my mouse button over the, the little purple bar's end and drag it out or drag it in, and that will adjust it to however long or short I want it to be. Four seconds to five seconds is usually a good time. You don't want to have the title there the whole time. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to press play. Um, El Coyote. Awesome. That looks good. Let's see what other edits I need to make. We're sitting here and chatting. And I, you know, I've known Billy. In fact, John, my husband, uh, called my father for his hand, my hand, from here. So we have 15 years of history. Thanks for taking a few minutes. So, um, how long have you been here at El Coyote? 36 years. 36 years. Wow. And how old is El Coyote? 88. 88 years old. Wow. I, I know that I come to every year we come to the birthday parties and we have this famous pizza. The, the pizza, the, the, the soup, and the... Cool. Now, in this interview, I've already got an image of a pizza that I'm wanting to include because I thought that was a really cool thing to add in for this. So what I'm going to do is line up the play bar with where I want to introduce that image. 88 years old. Wow. I, I know that I come to every year we come to the birthday parties and we have this famous pizza. Cool. So that's probably the best time to bring that in. So my image, I can go back to my media and find my image there because I've already uploaded that. And I'm going to drag this on the top of my interview, similar to where those titles go. Now let's see how that looks. I'm going to press play. We come to the birthday parties and we have this famous pizza. The, the pizza, the, the, the soup, and the, and the meal. So you awesome. So I've got my image on the top. The audio is underneath. That's looking really good. Now, in terms of the way the image is presented, it's zooming in in terms of what's called a Ken Burns zoom uh, on this man's face. Now, if I wanted to focus maybe on more on the food, I need to change that. So let's look at the options that are available to you with editing images here. So when you first upload an image, it'll probably have Ken Burns. That's the default setting for iMovie. So double click on the image. And what you do next is you go to this icon here. This is the cropping tool. So you click on this. Now, as you can see, there's three options available to me. There's Ken Burns, there's Crop to Fill, and there's Fit. So let's look at what these all look like. So I'm going to go with Fit, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. And we have this famous pizza. 
So as you can see, fit just takes up the whole space. Now, depending on the size of the image, there will be black bars on the outside of it if the image is more squared or doesn't meet the, the aspect ratio of the film, which is in widescreen. Now let's look at another version. Crop to fill. This is when I select a specific aspect of the, film, uh, the photograph that I want to highlight. So maybe I'm just gonna choose this bit right here. Let's see how that looks. Come to the birthday parties and we have this famous pizza. Cool, so as you can see, there's no black bars there, but it's zoomed in on what we're uh, talking about. Now the third option is the Ken Burns, and this is when the, the camera moves. So as it was zooming in on his face, maybe I wanna flip that and have this zoom in more so on the pizza, make that be the focal point. So I can adjust the size of these images to make sure it's sort of in line with what I'm wanting to showcase. By moving those around, and we'll have the start one as the first one, and the end one is where the image leans, ends up. And let's see how this looks. Come to the birthday parties, and we have this famous pizza. The pizza, the, the, the soup, and the, and the meal. So you can walk. Awesome. That works pretty well for me. It showcased exactly what I wanted to see, which is going from, hey, personal element, to let's look at the, the food that we're talking about here, because everyone loves food. But I may want to make this a little bit longer. So I can drag this out as long as I wish. I think about five seconds is all that I need here, maybe four and a half. Let's see how this looks. So we have this famous pizza. The pizza, the, the, the soup, and the, and the meal. So you can walk on around. Fantastic. Now, the reason why I wanted it to be a little bit longer is because that's the topic of what they're talking about. So that's how I'm going to add that in there. Appetizer, a soup, and a meal at less than $20. It's amazing. And so tell me a little bit about the history of Al Qaeda. Well, it was opened up in 1931 by Mrs. March and her husband. Uh, they passed away apparently, but it's still it's still the same family as always. Yeah, this has been passed down from generation after generation after generation. So. I know it's a famous place. I sometimes come and see. While we're here, we get celebrity sightings. A lot of celebrity sightings, and then we're also famous for filming. We do a lot of filming. And not to do, not not to be proud of it, but this is where Sharon Tate had her last meal. Sure. Oh, with Sharon Tate. Jane yeah. Sebring and the Folgers. <laughs> they dined here that night. Went home. They got married. So. And you were telling me that you're actually going to be filming here. We're filming here, and he's going to do it on August 9th. And who's going to be filming here? Um, what's his name? Uh, Den Denzel, was it Denzel? No. Quentin oh, Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. Now, this type of sort of dialogue as part of the interview where there's a little bit of stumbling, but you get to the answer, that's okay. It's more so when you're really stuck and it's like 30 seconds of just umming and ahhing and maybe that's what you might want to trim out. But overall, make your life easier. This type of thing is absolutely fine. So let's push on. We don't need to remove any aspects of the film yet. No. Thanks, that's, that's our camera guy. Thank you. <laughs> and you have, you have Brad Pitt in it, you have DiCaprio. And I think I was playing Sharon Tate, the girl who won the best, actor, best supporting actress last year for uh, Carrigan. Margo something. Uh huh. No, I don't know. I'm sorry. She's but pretty famous. Too. She's pretty famous. Margo Kidder? No. No. She's so, uh, like, she's beautiful, Margo Kidder. No. no, it depends. This is a Sharon Tate movie, so it's younger. But it's, not about, it's not about her murder, because then you know, oh. the Tate family would not go for it. So. Oh, so there you go. Now, that part of the film, uh, of the interview there, was a lot of umming and ahhing. It was about 30 seconds worth. So what I might recommend in this instance is probably to trim that out. So what you want to do is find the point where maybe the the sort of umming and ahhing started. So we'll find that here. <laughs> and you have, you have Brad Pitt in it, you have DiCaprio. And I was playing Sharon. So maybe just before this bit. Thank you. <laughs> and you have, you have Brad Pitt in it, you have DiCaprio. Perfect. That's about where I want to make a cut here. So I'm going to click on the film and right click and then go split clip. Now that's going to separate my film into two pieces. Okay. Now I want to find the point where I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to trim it forward a little bit. So I think it was about 20, 30 seconds or so. Let's see where we're up to now. It's beautiful, Margo. No, it depends. This is a Sharon Tate movie, so it's younger. But it's, not about, it's not about her murder, because then you know, oh. the Tate family would not go for it. So. Oh, so there you go. 
Cool. So it sounds like we're transitioning into a new topic. So I'm going to make sure I've got this in the right point. We will not go for it. So. Oh, so cool. Maybe I will zoom in a bit and use the waveform to help me out. So let's try this again. Go for it. So. Oh, so. so this is when the interviewer starts talking. So what I might want to do is select here because you can see it's quieter and then O comes in. So we're going to right click this and split the clip and we're going to zoom out again. And we'll remove this from the interview by right clicking it and selecting cut. Now let's see how that looks. Thanks, that's, that's our camera guy. Thank you. <laughs> and you have a Brad Pitt in it, Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, so there you go. So cool. Maybe I even want to trim off the O because it sounds like we've got um, a transition word in there. So I'll go play this. Oh, so awesome. So I can see that it's so is coming up here. So I'm going to right click here, cut that off. And try that again. So there you go. So cool. Now that is quite a harsh transition from one piece of film to the other. So there you go. So in order to remove that, what we want to do is add in a transition. Now transition is something that transitions between two pieces of film or an image. So you can go transition here, and you can choose the transitions that are available to you. There's a lot of them that are there. Now if you hover your mouse over them, you get a perspective of what it's going to look like. My recommendation is that these four here are the ones you should use. These ones here, you should stay away from because they can look very gimmicky, okay? So I'm gonna go with a simple cross dissolve. I'm gonna click on that and drag it down into this space. Now, let's rewatch that section with the transition present. Thanks, that's, that's our camera guy. Thank you. <laughs> and you have, you have a Brad Pitt in it, Leonardo DiCaprio. So there you go, so. That is a lot softer than before. Now, what do you need to take into consideration is that the transition has a length of time associated with it, which is one second, as you can see. I can adjust this by double clicking it and changing the duration. Now, the duration is gonna take an equal parts left side and right side. So half a second is gonna come off this and half a second is gonna come off that to make sure it fits in in place. Uh, but overall, I think that's pretty good. So I'll press play just to double check it and I'll see what else is left on the film. <laughs> and you have, you have a Brad Pitt in it, Leonardo DiCaprio. So there you go. So next time you're looking for an amazing Mexican food restaurant, you have to come and try El Coyote. They have amazing margaritas, the food, they have Billy, they have history. So come on out. Thanks so much, Billy. I appreciate you taking the time. Aw, thank you, sweetie. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Cool. Now you can see that the interviewer was pretty much still talking, but the camera cut off. So we might want to remove that last section. So we'll just line up with our play bar, make sure we've got the right point in place. Oh, yeah, I appreciate oh, you taking the you time. Know, you know, you so oh, thank you, sweetie. Have a great day, everyone. Perfect. Now I'm going to zoom in to make sure I can cut off that little bit because it looks like it's not much. But then when you zoom in, you can see there's a bit there. And I'm going to drag this back in. Remember how we can highlight our mouse over there and drag it back in? So that way I've trimmed the end. So let's check out the end now. Uh, probably a little bit further back. Great day, everyone. Maybe even slightly further in. Let's try that now. Everyone. Perfect. So that's looking pretty good. Um, now, what I might want to do is really reflect on the audio quality of the interview. Now, obviously, to make your life easier, you want to film your interviews in places where it's easy to be heard, easy to be seen, and the lighting's effective. With this one here, uh, there's a lot of background noise. So if I'm wanting to increase the volume, and this will be the total volume, so including the background noise, but just to get a little bit more information from these people here, what I can do is hover my mouse over the waveform. Now, as you can see, if I move my mouse down, it changes into two arrows. That is gonna allow me to increase the volume or decrease the volume. So the default setting is 100%, but if I put it up higher and higher, what you're gonna see is that the volume's gonna spike up and down, okay? And it even changes color reflective of what you've uh, done with the film. So as you can see here, you've got little yellow bits and even red bits above that. Now the yellow and red typically suggest when the audio is quite loud. So you may wanna turn your volume down a little bit for this bit. I'll give you a second to do that. But otherwise I'm gonna press play just to give you a perspective of how loud this sounds now. And he's gonna do it on Right, so it's a little bit louder than needed. So what we wanna do is drag this back down. I think about 150 is probably gonna be a good rate for this interview. 
So we'll see if we can get there to like 150. Perfect. And let's see what this looks like. And he's going to do it on August 9th. That's better. It's a little bit louder now, so it's a little bit clearer for them to be heard. You will have every now and then a few little yellow pieces, uh, but if you play over them, you can just double check to see that the audio is okay. Wow, and how old? Cool. Now, one thing you've got to bear in mind is that if you've split the clip into two pieces, you will need to increase the volume of the second piece as well to match it, because currently if we leave it at 100 and 158, the volume is going to change. Quentin oh, Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. Thanks, that's our camera guy. Thank you. And you have Brad Pitt in it, DiCaprio. So there you go. So next time you're looking for an amazing... So as you can see, the volume is a little bit high. Now it's a lot lower. So really play around with what you want to do for the volume. I think for this interview, 100% is actually probably pretty good. Reflecting on those two side by side, I think the background noise can get a little bit overwhelming if it's too high up. Uh, but that's pretty much it there. Now in terms of other audio that you want to add, you could click add audio here. And iMovie's actually got a bunch of recordings for music that you can put into your interviews. Now, I found one the other day, which is called Park Bench. It sounds like this. Now, say I'm gonna use Park Bench. What I'm gonna do is left click on this and drag it down into the space and line it up with where I want the music to begin with. Now, once I've lined it up, what I wanna think about is how much noise there's gonna be. Now, with this, interview being that there's a lot of background noise, adding extra audio is probably not going to be the best. So you'd want to make sure it's nice and low if you are doing that. So same with what we did before, hovering your mouse over the waveform and decreasing the audio and pressing play. Hello Studio City Community News in Hollywood West. Now for this interview, I wouldn't add in music, but that is something you can do. Another really cool feature about what you can do with audio is that you can actually change the way that the audio is introduced. So if we press play here, just so that there's no background noise. Have a great day, everyone. So it's nice and smooth there, but if I wanted to make this a little bit more um, of a softer transition, I can highlight my mouse over this little circle. Now that'll allow me to drag this in. So it's really gonna not let the music hit its peak until about eight seconds. So if I try that again, Now, as you can see, the music is starting to come up. It's starting to starting at a low point, then building and building and building. So that is something you could do at the beginning and even at the end of your interview to make sure that it's going out nice and smooth. Cool. Now, for this interview, like I said, probably not needed to have extra music there, but you can cut that out there. Now, the last thing I want to get into is adding in sort of a leaving image. Now. With your interviews, this is an extra little thing you can do. It's not necessarily recommended unless you've got a reasonable image that you wanna use and you basically use it for each interview. Now, I wouldn't put this at the beginning of the interview either because that can look quite tacky. This is just sort of a leaving note to remind them who has been involved with that interview. So to do that, I'm gonna go back to my media and drag in the image that I'm gonna choose. Now, this is the image I've selected and I, as a local leader, I'm gonna use this image for every single interview because I feel like this image probably sums up the community quite well. Rather than having my logo and having real estate specific information, what I'm gonna do is have an image that's representative of the community because that's what people care about. Now, I'm gonna drag this in here into the back and as you can see, this is the image. The default setting is that it's on a Ken burn, so I'm gonna change this because I don't wanna have that and choose the cropping tool and change Ken Burns to crop to fill. Because I don't really have all these cars down here. I don't need these shadows. What I'm gonna do is increase this a little bit higher and change the size of the image to really highlight what I want to showcase. So I like to get the building in there. I think having this um, chimney in there as well, that's gonna look good. This is pretty much all I want from the image. So I'm gonna crop to fill and only use that. So let's see what this looks like. Awesome, that's good. Although the quality of my photo wasn't the best, I'm not the best photographer. So what I could do is I can change the color layout of this image. So to do that, I can click on this little color correction tool, which is present when you click on the image. And that actually allows you to remove or add uh, white or black to the image itself. So I can add more white by dragging the circle to the right, or I can add more black to the image by dragging this to the left. Okay, 
So I'm going to drag that a little bit to that side. I can even change sort of the medium tones. As you can see, it changes there. And I can even change the general overview slightly to that side. So I'm going to try and make this look sort of something that's presentable for me. I can even change the color saturation as well. Make this lighter, darker, really up to you there. And you can put in more blues and more yellows to that as well. Okay, well, let's actually see how this image looks. And I want to look at this in full screen. So I'm going to put this into full Thank screen now. Have a great day, everyone. That's a pretty good looking photo there. I'm pretty happy with that. And the reason why I want it to be quite dark is because I'm going to have white writing over the top. So I'm going to add in a title. Actually, I'm going to add in two. I'm going to add in standard because I think this is nicely presented and I like how it looks. And I'm going to drag that here over the image. Cool. Now this title, I'm going to put in uh, the business name. Cool. And I'm going to put the name of the interviewee as well. Cool. Now, the text that's being used here is not really my favorite. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change the font to Helvetica because that's actually park bench colors. Um, i going to put that there. And I'm going to change this one to Helvetica as well. Awesome. Now, I can't change the layout of where that text occurs, but that's quite, a, that's quite striking there. I want to make sure to get rid of this bottom one as well because I don't want to have title text here on that um, section of it. So let's press play and check that out now. that looks pretty effective. If I hadn't added more sort of black tones to the, um, uh, the image, it would be a little bit more difficult to see that. But if I do want to change my own color um, scheme in the text, I can simply click this little white box and move this around. Maybe I want it to be red. What I can do then is change that to red there if I press play. And now it's in red. Okay, although I don't want to have it in red, I'm going to have it in white because I feel like white is a little bit more striking there. And actually, I'm going to add in my own little extra bit to this. I'm going to make this title about three and a half seconds. I'm going to add another title on the back end of it straight away. I'm going to put my information as the interviewer so I could put Liberty Village Realty. Shelly C, and I'm going to put even my Parkbench site down here as well. Not dub dub dub. I think just putting parkbench.com forward slash and then your area. Cool. Now, what I can do is change the text of this to Helvetica, because I like that to be matching. Change this to Helvetica as well. Maybe even change the size of this. Maybe I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, about 58, and I'll make this about 80. Maybe I'm going to change that to about 58 as well. Let's see what this looks like. I might even do the same for this one too. Cool. Let's press play. Awesome. That's nice and well presented. Very concise. Doesn't take away from the image. And so is that. I've got my website down the bottom. I might even change the size of the website to make it a little bit smaller. To go down to maybe 36. And I'm going to drag this back in as well, because what happens if I press play? Day, everyone. You can see the title there. That looks great. See another title there that looks really good too. Okay. But if I keep going, it still plays during the transition out. So I might want to trim that up. Okay. And I might even want to put a transition in there as well in between these two sections, because it's quite rough. Hey, everyone. So maybe I'm going to put a fade to white in this space here. Cool. Now let's see what this looks like. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Have a great day, everyone. Looking good now. Looking good. Awesome. Now the only challenge that I have here is that the URL down here I've noticed is looks a little bit too small. So I'm going to change this, make sure it's the right font. Because it might actually be fixed because of that reason. There we go. That's a little bit better to see. Or I could change the color or the size simply by navigating with these here. But that's pretty much all that you're really going to need to do. There are other things you can do, you know, if you're wanting to add an extra video. So maybe you've got a additional video, say it's this one down here. And you're wanting to include this because this has got some good video elements from the interview that I wanted to add in. And I want to put it in the interview, but I still want to have the audio underneath. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to split this. And then this will allow me to detach the audio. 
Now what detaching audio is gonna do is it's gonna remove the waveform from the video there itself, okay? So now I can drag this over the top here and incorporate whatever video section I'm wanting to have. Because if I was to just add this in right now, you could hear both audio tracks. Hey everyone, it's Joe here. It's and, I'm and that's not really what we're looking for. So what I'm gonna do is detach the audio from uh, this here, get rid of that, and I could even remove this too. Oops, could even remove this too here. So make sure this is all lined up. Put this in the middle and line that up again. So now, as I'm going through, I've got my transitions in here, maybe a fade to black and a fade to black again. I can go from one video seamlessly to the other. Well, they passed away, apparently, but it's still, it's still the same family as always. It's just been passed down for generations. I know, it's a famous place. I sometimes... Now, you wouldn't do it maybe with audio, uh, sorry, with video where you're speaking like I'm doing with this one, but this could be maybe a walkthrough of their business showcasing what they offer um, that you want to remove the sound of. And so that's why you remove the sound, but you keep the original sound there and it will stay the same that way. That's more of an advanced edit. Pretty much what you want to have as the biggest takeaway from this session is that you should be editing your interviews in a way that's going to minimize, or sorry, filming your interviews in a way that's going to minimize the editing that you've got to do. Because that's going to save you a whole bunch of time later on. You won't have to go through the process of adding all this. Some people actually edit their interviews by simply trimming in the ends and posting them. No titles, no transitions, no images, nothing. Right? All they do is trim the ends to make sure it's nice and well presented, and that's it. But this pretty much shows you all the things you need to do with iMovie here. The next steps would be to share this. Now to share it, you simply click on this top right um, icon up here. And you can share directly to YouTube. Um, so you can put it onto your Parkbench site. Or what you could do is have a backup file. So I recommend sharing this as a file. And with this, you're going to give it the name. Matt Remax West Realty. And I'm going to put Darren Lee, parkbench.com, and Liberty Village. Now, the reason why I'm doing this here, putting in my name, my brokerage, the person's name, the person's business, and the person's area, maybe even the person's title, because these are the key words, and this is really useful for SEO purposes. The same thing you're going to put in the description just make it elaborated. Matt from Remax West Realty interviews Darren Lee from parkbench.com, the owner um, based in Liberty Village. Okay. Now, in terms of resolution and format, leave format as video and audio. Keep the resolution as that. If you have the option to go up to 1080p, do it. Sometimes your camera will only film in 720. The higher the number, the better. And then in terms of quality, you want to keep it as best or pro res because iMovie's got a really cool feature that instead of it being low, medium, or high, you've got this extra res, uh, quality, um, which you can use, which is called best or pro res. Keep it at that because that's a really good one. In terms of compress, you can choose faster or better quality. I recommend better quality. And what you'll see is that when you adjust these, oftentimes the size of the file is going to change. So it starts off as 1.23 gigs, but if I change it to 1080p, it's going to go to 282 gigs. If I change this uh, quality to low, it's going to drop it down. If I change it to best, it's going to push it right back up. Okay. Then once you click next, what's going to happen is it's going to choose a place to save it on your computer. Save it to the desktop there. And it's going to go to the circle. Now that circle is going to start to fill in as it starts to work, go through. So you can click on this to get a bit of an update, but that circle is gonna start empty and then it's gonna fill in and be one same color. Once it's done, you'll get a notification saying your um, video is finished exporting and it's gonna be positioned where you've chosen to save it on your computer. Cool, so pretty straightforward. If you've got any other questions, as you can see, it's starting to fill through. You can always reach out to us. Support at parkbench.com is a good place to reach out to, but for editing questions, I'm probably the best person to go to there. So Matthew at parkbench.com. Uh, otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic day and happy prospecting.